This gold-plated electronic pin can actually always make you rich, but don't ever throw it away. Today, we're going to recover pure gold from it and see how much we can get. So how are you all doing? Welcome back to another exciting video. As you can see, these pins are gold-plated, not solid gold, which means the gold is only on the surface. Let's start the process. First, we'll add some water into the container and make sure all the pins are properly settled. Now we'll add a little more water, and once that's done, we'll pour in some nitric acid. This acid will dissolve all the unwanted metals, copper, brass, and iron, leaving only the gold layer behind. You can already see the chemical reaction starting. The solution begins to bubble, and soon the real gold will either float to the top or settle at the bottom. To speed things up, we can heat the container a little. Once heated, the reaction becomes stronger, and the unwanted material starts breaking down. Then we'll add a few drops of HF acid, which increases the acid's strength so the process happens faster. But be careful, too much of it can also dissolve gold, so use only a small amount. We'll now seal the container and leave it overnight for the reaction to complete. All right, it's the next morning, but let's check how our reaction turned out. First, we'll carefully remove the lid and take a look inside. As you can see, the pins are floating in the acid. That's a clear sign that all the base metals have been dissolved and only the gold coating remains. If there was still any brass or copper left, the pins would have sunk by now. So this means the gold is almost pure. Now we'll pour a bit more nitric acid just to double check. If there's any remaining base metal, it'll dissolve in this second round. To speed things up again, we'll light a small flame under the container. The heat helps the reaction complete faster. We'll also add a few more drops of HF acid, but not too much. Remember, too much can damage the gold itself. It looks like the acid has done its job. This step is really important because, you, because it keeps our gold safe and clean. And just look at this. The gold particles are thick and heavy. All of this gold came from those tiny electronic pins. Our process is going great so far. Now it's time to move to the next step, where we'll mix mercury with the gold dust to extract it completely. Now that our gold dust is ready, it's time to move to the next stage, mercury extraction. We'll carefully pour the gold residue into a clean bowl and add a small amount of mercury. Mercury has a special ability. It attracts and absorbs gold, separating it from other impurities. We'll gently stir the mixture so the mercury can reach every bit of gold dust you'll notice the mercury becoming heavier and shinier. That means it's pulling in all the gold particles. To make the process smoother, we'll add a pinch of washing soda. The soda removes any oil or dirt, making it easier for the mercury to bond with the gold. This is a crucial step. It ensures we lose no gold in the process. Now we'll rinse the mixture several times with clean water.
Each wash helps the gold and mercury settle together while the dirt floats away. After a few rounds, almost all the gold has been absorbed by the mercury. Next, we'll separate the mercury gold mix from the rest of the material and prepare it for purification, where we'll remove the mercury and reveal pure gold. Now that we have the mercury mixed with gold, it's time to separate them. We'll carefully transfer the mercury gold mixture into a small cloth filter. When we squeeze it gently, the excess mercury starts dripping through the fabric, and what remains inside the cloth is the heavier, gold-rich portion. You can actually see the mercury collecting at the bottom, while the top part forms a small white ball. That's where our gold is trapped inside the mercury. Next, we'll move that small ball into a heat-proof bowl for purification. To clean it further, we'll add a bit of nitric acid. The acid reacts instantly, dissolving any remaining mercury and leaving behind only raw gold. You'll notice the liquid turning cloudy and bubbling. That's the mercury burning away. We'll light a small flame beneath the bowl to speed up the reaction. As long as the fumes appear white, there's still mercury left inside. Once the smoke fades and the liquid clears, we'll know that the mercury is completely gone. At this point, we'll rinse the gold several times with clean water to remove any acid residue. This process is repeated two or three times until the gold looks clean and bright. Now our gold is fully separated, pure, and ready for melting. Now comes the most exciting part, melting the purified gold. We'll transfer all the cleaned gold dust into a small clay bowl. To prepare it for melting, we'll sprinkle a bit of borax powder on top. Borax helps remove any last impurities and makes the melting process smoother. Next, we'll light the torch and begin heating the bowl. Slowly, the gold starts to glow. First red, then orange, and finally it melts into a bright golden liquid. This is the moment that makes all the hard work worth it. Once it's fully melted, we'll let it cool down for a few minutes. After cooling, we'll carefully remove it from the bowl. And here it is, a shiny, solid piece of pure 24 karat gold. All of this came from simple gold-plated electronic pins. 
a perfect example of how much hidden value lies inside e-waste. If you enjoyed watching this process, make sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more amazing gold recovery experiments. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.